Hey guys, so here's the start of our John Deere Gator video series. We're going to do a few videos on this machine, getting it, uh, hopefully getting it running, getting it cleaned up so we can sell it. Um, I made a short late last summer or last fall uh, about this thing, a real quick video, and here it is in the, here it is in the flesh. So you can get a better look at it and uh we're just going to go through it check a few things it obviously needs a battery a cleaning probably a fresh tank of fuel with some service we don't know if there's any major things wrong with it repair wise um, it came from a golf course it was kept because it was i assume in better shape than all the rest of them they disposed of the other ones and this was the only one that they kept i guess for the gardener and it hadn't been used in a long long time so we're gonna like I said, we're going to give it a wash, connect the battery to it, see if we can get that box to open. It's got the power lift box. And then have a look at what's going on inside. So we got our little pressure washed off. Here's the battery that runs the machine. And we want to uh, lift, the, lift the box so we can check out that motor that's underneath of there and see what's, what's going on. But being totally dead, the, the, the rays won't work, the, the lift on the box. So we have a spare lawn tractor battery here and some jumper cables. And what we're gonna try to do is uh, just connect this battery to this battery and see if there's enough uh, juice in the system that we can lift the box off with the uh, automatic with the electronic uh, dump lift so we just got to look in here and see that's our negative battery cable the black one like so and our positive these are weird jumper cables <laughs> Like so, and then we've got our negative right there, and our positive right there. All right, and here on the dash, this is our raise and lower switch, which doesn't work, but it might work if we turn, turn the key on. Oh, we got battery light, we got oil light, and we got a working dump box. This Gator has the V-twin engine, so the larger, I think that's a, it's not a Kohler, no, I think that's a Yamaha engine, um, and it's got the slip drive clutch to it, snowmobile style slip, slip drive clutch. It looks like it's all there. I don't think anybody's um, robbed any parts off of this. Mind you, I don't know how they would have with the, the def, or the, the lump box being closed. Check the oil doesn't look too bad. It's still kind of clean. It's nice and full. I think we got a good one here, guys. I think this thing might might uh, fire up and run with some fresh gas on it in it. Should we give it a try? I think so. Or a neutral. Mm -hmm. 
All right, guys, so here's the battery, and it just had this little hooky strap holding it in like that, and our negative and our positive, and our replacement battery's got the negative and the positive in the same spots. So I'm thinking this should be an easy change. And then we don't have to droop jumper cables over the thing anymore. We've already drained out that gas tank and uh, next is going to be running the fuel pump to flush out what's in the pickup line. In the pickup line between the, the pump and the tank. Always undo your ground wire first. Basic mechanics. And always connect your ground wire last. No, oh, she's she's growing in there. Growing <laughs> in there. Look at that mess. Um, we should probably get a scraper and scrape out that battery. Uh, that battery tray. It's a it's a bit of a mess. Before we try and squeeze a new battery in there. Cleaned her out, got a couple pounds of gravel and dirt. And we take our, our new battery. Fits in there pretty good. This is one of our Costco batteries, isn't it? It's the last of our Costco batteries. Guys, if you need cheap lawn tractor batteries, go to Costco at the end of the summer. And uh, how much did we get these ones, these last batch for? Like 30 bucks a piece, I think. Something like that, 20, 40? $29 or $39 a battery. A good deal. Where did the, uh, where did the other wire go? Ah, right there. All right, when we get the lid open, we'll reconnect the strap because I can't, I'm not going to be able to reach in behind there through the back to get it over top. So let's see if this thing will lift the gate under its own power now. So it's alive, as you can see, it, it cranks over, but the gas in here is probably five years old. And there's about uh, just shy of a quarter tank of gas you can see down in there. So what we're gonna do is use our handy dandy oil extractor, fluid extractor, and we're gonna pump out as much of this gas as we can. And then we're going to raise the box, undo the fuel line off the carburetor, and use the electric pump to pump out the remainder of uh, what's in the line and what's in the very bottom of the tank. Then we're going to replace it with some premium fuel. We're going to pull the carburetor off and clean it out and uh, try and fire this baby up. So now what we're going to do is disconnect the fuel line, which runs off of, of this fuel regulator, which is actually an aftermarket thing. I think someone's installed this regulator. And here's your small electric fuel pump. What we're going to do is pump whatever's left in the circuit into this uh, Tim Hortons cup. Oh, it's a roll up the rim to win cup too. That's an old one. That's an old one. A um, little plug for Tim Hortons right there. So if we 
take off this little clip, crack this loose, and now we just simply turn the key. Here comes the last of the fuel that's in the tank and the, uh, the hose that runs up to the carburetor. Yum, yum. You can tell how old that is by the color. It's probably been sitting for over five years. Man, look at, look at that stuff. That looks like a Tim Horton steep tea right there. <laughs> we're gonna dump that and we're gonna do it a couple more times until it's all gone. So there's the last of it. We got about a cup and a half out of this delicious stuff. Uh, what we're gonna do now is dump in a few liters of fresh premium fuel, and we're gonna continue pumping the gas through to, to rinse the bottom of that tank and this fuel supply line out. And then we're gonna get into pulling this carburetor off and cleaning out the bowl and the main jet, and that should get this thing to the point where it should start and run all on its own. Lot cleaner gas. Yeah. It's the good stuff. I'd say that's probably enough gas. Alright, so we got some fresh fuel running through this fuel line from the tank, and now we're going to remove this carburetor because we want to get into the bowl and the main jet and soak it in our in our ultrasonic cleaner we have to uh get rid of any any blockages so that there's your choke cable which leads up to underneath the seat there's a little choke choke prod pin temperature sensor got our two carburetor stud nuts And there's just a little drain hose on the other side. And hopefully without ruining any gaskets, we'll be able to get this thing off. Oops. How much you dropped? I dropped the nut. And there's the drain hose. And that's down there. We'll find it when we roll this thing forward. All right, so we're going to take this carb bowl off on the bench and pull out the jetting and uh, show you guys how we like to clean these. So inside of these carburetors, you usually find a mess. We'll see, we'll see what this one looks like. You can see on the end of that nut, it's kind of mucky and rusty. Uh -oh. Uh oh, or under that bolt, sorry, should I say. Not bad. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a pleasant surprise. There's a little bit of gunk down where the jets usually yeah, are, but oh, don't lose that. Now, if we can get this turned out of there without damaging it. Oh, I 
that's a tight one. I might have to put it in the the vice. Yeah, we're gonna have to mount this in the vise and uh, get some real pressure onto it to make this work. So there's our main jet. We're going to give that a boil in the ultrasonic carb cleaner. And sitting up on top of it, hopefully we can get it out of there. That was easy. It's our emulsion tube. So this also is going to get a good clean. We'll end up dropping the entire carburetor in there. So here's our carburetor all apart, guys carb emulsion tube with some holes in it that need to be cleaned out. There's a little hole there, a few little holes there. Our main jet, bowl nut, and bowl. What we're going to do is throw it into our parts cleaning basket. Drop your carburetor in with the, the float pin on the horizontal, not on the uh, vertical as the vibrations will usually knock it out and then you'll have to go fishing for it in the carb cleaning machine. Over here is our Sharper Tech carb cleaner. So this uses ultrasound, heat and uh, water-based detergent to clean carburetors and jewelry and things. You just drop that in there. Like that. Uh, we'll set this one to 20 minutes and hit start. All right, so this has been in there for about, what, 20 minutes? Yeah. This car wasn't too bad, so 20 minutes is probably, probably enough. She's steaming. It's steaming hot. So here's our freshly cleaned carburetor, pin intact, we didn't lose it. Bowl nice and tidy, bowl nut rust is gone, nice and clean. Our emulsion tube looks good, holes are clean, and the all important main jet. Let's make sure you can see through that, I don't know if you can see it on video, yep. but uh, it does have a nice clean hole down the center of it, so I think we probably saved this carb. We're going to put it back together now, throw it onto the machine, and see if we can get this thing to start and run on its own power. So we're just going to throw this back together, it's, it's mostly dry, um, put a little tiny bit of lubricant down the down the carburetor threads there so when you thread your main jet in it seats nicely that's your emulsion tube drops in there's your main jet and when you thread this in you don't want to tighten it too much but you want it you want it snug And we're just going to do is give her a quick blast of air. Get any more water out of it.
tighten that down just snug. All right, and there's our carburetor. So we're gonna uh, take this back outside and install it on our machine and see what happens. Get our throttle link rod and our throttle spring installed, just like that. One electrical connector, our fuel line which we've drained, rinsed and primed. Hopefully we got all the bad fuel out. Got a little overflow. Overflow drain right there, like that. All right, our intake, intake boot. One ground wire and then the nut, please. Flange nut number one. Flange nut number two. Tighten those down with a 10 mil, and then this is our choke cable right here, just like that. That's actuated from a, a, a knob under the seat. Don't want to make them too tight and crack or break anything. Snug, and then there was the PCV, PCV hose, and then our air filter connection. We're just going to leave this loose to start with, in case we have to prime it with a little fuel. We can squirt it in there, but we're gonna we're gonna give this thing a try. It has an electric fuel pump, so we may not have any priming problems with that. So there's our choke, and there's our fuel pump. Give it a sec to. Fill the bowl. 